Um, so, bud, uh, I, I, I know last week you were like, hey, can we do, can I be on Team JXT? Um, this week I kind of need you to be on Team JXT because while, yes, you will be technically representing JWF at, at crossing the line, you will be facing someone who's been a bit of a problem, an itch in my craw named Falcor the Stoppable. So I am going to need you just like as buds to take him out. Oh, how the turns table. All right, listen, I'll, I'll tell you what. Break his back, make him humble. I'll tell you what. I was already planning on kicking Falcor's ass from here into the nether region, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do it for you. Okay. But there will be some, there will be some solidarity. I, I want you to know that you'll get what you want. Okay, yeah, sure, fine. Okay, cool. Can we just both fight? <laughs> Can we do a handicap match for us? Uh, no, let's get into no, this. No, 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 I, I want that, I want that, I want that. Uh, well, oh, it's been, it's been a while since we've seen old Megaran, a, a golden ticket holder. Yeah, when holder. was the last time we saw him? Last time we saw I, him? I mean, I know he was at the snappening, that but... That was it, last time was the snappening, and his golden ticket saved him during that rumble, and he's taken on the champ. Uh, he didn't get, of course we know Sammy Sin, who has been off training in the Alps, uh, has been uh, off training for his eventual title match against Gibbons, which is why he's not been on the show. But uh, yeah, like it's it's good to see Mega Ran get a title shot. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Game just kind of gave us this for the most part, and I said, "Let's do it." Yeah, it it kind of came in just out of nowhere last week, so we're at the point where it. This is where game's doing what game's gonna do. Yeah, uh, Johnny Bananas taking on Zack Ryder after last week when Joey Pajamas, Johnny's tag team partner, managed to get one over on Papa Blitz. Uh, a good old red versus blue, baby! Red versus blue extreme rules. And then in the main event... Yep. Uh, well, of course, we know it's gonna be champions versus champions. We're going to see... Chuck Gibbons take on the JWF champion Guy Fieri. We're going to see Blake Tanner take on the, B or the BS champion Falcor. And we're going to see the JWF tag team champions, the Rising Suns, take on Back in Black, which is a dream match on its own, especially when you remember that epic rivalry from last year where FOMO-san faced off against the Jebeduk. And of course, we know then FOMO came on on top, but can he today... Find out! Start the show! Alright, here it is! Okay, look, no, just like... Just, like, stomp his head onto a chair or some shit. Like, just something to, like... Maybe he's gone a little crazy, and if we just knock his head right, Falcor will be good again. Ooh, that's a good idea. I mean, I will. I do plan on stomping his head in at it's, least it's once. It's like amnesia in a sitcom. <laughs> I'm hyphy. I'm, I kind of want Mega Ran to get a victory over this guy. I would be interested to see how that changes the dynamic of our company. Yeah, well, also... Because it's been... Um, well, Houston, Houston's got Chuck distracted right now, so it may allow Mega Ran to get a sneak victory. All right, Mega Ran looking poised and ready, but... Oh, look at this! Houston's not just in his head, he's outside the ring, and he is beating the living hell out of Chuck Gibbon. Oh dear, it is, it's already started. Yep. All right. And now it looks like the match about to get, begin. Our champion looking a little bit rocked, but maybe able to make a comeback. And I, I will be honest, this week, I believe it was this week, because <laughs> I don't remember the JWF schedule. Uh, I, I'm fairly sure we did make our choice. And the wild-eyed Southern boys, they may be JXT originals, but... 
like I said a couple of weeks ago, we're not here for for originals. We're not here to be like, oh good, these old classics are coming back. We're wanting the best of the best. And the blockbusters proved why they were the best of the best this week. Ah, uh, yes, the block busters oh i'm i'm sorry like i the blockbusters who have been on jwf for how long now well we planted them i don't want to i don't want to say anything but over the over the past few we you like months we've we've brought in robert hill our real heater on team jxt we brought in gazi and then we brought in our final members, the Blockbusters. I have been slowly making sure the JWF was filled with people ready to uh, execute my commands over the past few months, including this man, Gibbons, who is just taking Mega Ran down. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, it stops sounding less like a rivalry between companies and more like Star Wars. What? Like the prequels? What do you mean? Do it. Uh, I, <laughs> I am the set. I am the JXT. <laughs> no, but I am. All right, big knee drop there from Gibbons. Down on to the chest of Mega Ran. And now look at this. Mega Ran. Oh, avoiding the suplex. And he has got him. He has got him picked up. Oh, barrel roll takes him down. Barrel oh, and now roll. Mega Ran is poised and ready to put Gibbons down. Picks him up and just slams him to the mat. But unfortunately, Gibbons was in the ropes. Uh-huh. Too, uh, you know what, uh, Mega Ran, he, he was too, uh, too much gusto to try to get that pin early. He should have drug him to the middle of the ring. He does need a name for his new finisher, by the way, the running power slam. The Mega Slam. You fucking got it one. <laughs> you got it yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Gibbons, Gibbons really no-selling that Mega Slam, and, and Mega Ran's upset about it. He's just delivering the boots before look at the strength of this man just oh massive deadlift suplex oh oh i i, I know that his um oh God, yeah i know it's, it's late it's so okay late. um but i i you know i know that his uh his original character design is based off of that of mega man but Mega Ran is more like Guts Man right now, bringing the power and the pain. Uh-huh, And but unfortunately, Chuck Gibbons may not allow that power to come anymore. But wait, whips him into the ropes. Mega Ran looking real strong in this one. Whips him into the ring. Could we see a major upset right now if Mega Ran's able to do it? But oh, reversing it is Chuck Gibbons. Not quite, not 100%, uh -huh, sadly. And delivers it. That beautiful Olympic slam, but Mega Ran manages to grab the ropes, and you can see Chuck Gibbons. That is not a move we usually see him make, as he just does that alligator roll, trying to weaken Mega Ran. Uh huh. Trying to go for the core of Mega Ran, which I think is very important. It is very hard to get at Mega Ran's core, Whoa. but it, it, at that? the end, what'd you do? What'd you do, Gibbons? He just kind of, oh, he does the spin a -rooney. Oh, God. Does he get that all twisted great. or is he just kind of spinning in place? Ooh. <laughs> I'm spinning. No. That's, that is the look of pain right there. Yeah. The pain whoop, from whoop, the whoop. Whoop. whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. He does have a, at one point, a draw me like one of your French chucks. <laughs> Pose. Oh, deadlift suplex from Mega Ran once again. Mega Ran may be trying to get a big comeback here as he picks him up, but oh, unfortunately, gets taken down by Gibbons with a beautiful belly to belly. Look at the strength of Gibbons. This is why this is a man I am proud to call champion. He represents what JXT is. Oh, and now taking him to the ropes. 
And he's got him caught. Oh, Gibbons. Two. Oh, gets tossed off at the last minute after that clever rope maneuver. But, oh, look at the strength. Mega Ran tosses him down. Mmm, get him, Ran. Big shot to the head. Mega Ran putting on the performance of a lifetime tonight. This... And Yep, this could be a, a massive opportunity Never for Mega Ran. Olympic Slam. One, a two. Mega Ran kicked out. Kicked out. All right. Still in the game. And look at that. Gibbons wiping away. Might have been a bit of blood or maybe spit off of his mouth. Chuck Gibbons, uh, I think, getting a little impressed with Mega Ran right now. Yeah, very true. He's uh, he's holding up to everything that Gibbons can give barrel him, and Gibbons, roll, who has been... The barrel roll puts him down. Could we see another attempt at that Mega Slam? But not if Gibbons has anything to say about it. Belly to belly, tosses Mega Ran over, picks him up. Mega Ran with an arm drag. Both of these competitors, right now it is a do-or-die situation. Both of them trying everything in their arsenal to get it done. But it's just a matter of who can get it done first. Oh, Big suplex, but this time holds on. Mega Ran grabs the ropes. And he is in a very bad place, Blake Tanner. Mega Ran in a very bad place as Chuck gets him. Olympic slams him, goes for the pinfall, but Mega Ran once again wisely grabbing those ropes. Yep. Too close, man. Too close. You gonna go for it again? No. Nope. A little repeat of earlier in the match, that, that alligator roll. But Mega Ran whips him down into the mat. Oh, and Chuck Gibbons may be in danger right now. We may see an upset. And earlier we said it would be because of Houston. Oh, never mind. Big Russian leg sweep getting out of that attempt at the Mega Slam. And Gibbons has him targeted. He is in position for the Olympic Slam. Center of the ring goes for the pinfall. One, two, three. And after what was an absolutely hard-fought match, Chuck Gibbons manages to overcome Mega Ran despite everything Houston threw at him. Yeah, uh, and a valiant effort on Mega Ran's part, uh, notwithstanding the interference from Houston Longhorn. He, he, he put up a great, um, a great offensive and a great match. That's right. But now on to our next match, Blake Tanner. Now on to a true fight, true fisticuffs. As these three men fight for a, a replica JWF championship that we're going to throw in the garbage. What the fuck? Lumberjack just said no. What? <laughs> What's happening? They're just all... Um... <laughs> Boys? Falcor went straight for the table, by the way. And it led to his taking down by Ratboy Connor. And, and we've yet to see the Lumberjack and Falcor one on one, but uh, who who knows really coming out of this? Uh, who knows if like they'll they'll get a chance to do much against each other? I, I mean, this is, man, this fucking match. Can we just acknowledge he's up there and, and Falcor, like it doesn't even matter, was just fighting Ratboy on the outside, like. Fal Falcor seeming to not care what's happening to him right now. I don't think Falcor cares about oh. that belt as much as like... He tossed him into Ratboy, but Ratboy manages to stay strong. Brings him down to the mat. Falcor down, and we know uh, Lumberjack's able to defeat Connor. Connor's able to be beat Falcor. I bet you put Falcor against Lumberjack. That, that, that would complete that little rock, paper, scissors situation you got. Oh, that would be fun, too. That'd be real nice. Oh, man. Falcor beat Lumberjack. Well, game gave us this. How about next week we'll do Falcor versus Lumberjack? Lumberjack. Because let's just keep putting him against Big Boys because he fucking deserves it. Oh! <laughs> Holy shit, Falcor. We don't usually see his, uh... Damn! That was a drop kick and a half. God, fuck. Falcor, something's wrong with Falcor. Something has changed internally in Falcor. 
Well, it's a TLC match, and it's now complete. We've got all three. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Ladders and chairs. Now somebody get the uh, ladder, which is the only one of those that you need to fulfill the victory condition. You say that, you can stand on a table. You can. I mean, the, the lumberjack probably could easily, actually. Yep. Oh, no. Falcor has him in place, Blake. Falcor is where he's most comfortable. W wait a minute, no! And that Connor! Uh-oh. Connor sends him in! Falcor said, what's the Lumberjack doing? He's doing a little dance. <laughs> Make a little love. Get oh down in that. Blake! Get down in that. What? Falcor just got put through a table. This is not the same Falcor. Something is wrong with this Falcor. Something is wrong with this dragon. Connor, you good? Something is wrong with Falcor. Connor? Oh no. Connor. 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 Are you good? Connor. Connor, hey, you Connor. good? Okay. Connor. Okay, good. He's 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 doing some well. He's not doing much. Connor. Nope. Come, come on, Connor. Do something. Just big punches on both ends from all these boys. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Connor's been grabbed. Was going for the choke slam. But instead, oh, Lumberjack tosses him down before Falcor, returning the favor from earlier in the night, drags the Lumberjack down before picking him up. And, oh, what is this? What the fuck? Oh, my God. Vicious Driver takes him down into... Blue Dragon Bomb! Dragon Bomb. Falcor, uh, he, he was trying extra hard to put the Lumberjack away. I, is he gonna go for it? Oh yeah, he's going for it. Falcor climbing to the top. Falcor... Um... I don't think that he can reach... No, he can. Belt. With your... I'm just gonna have him grab it. Okay. You can't grab it. He can't grab I it. I can't do anything up here. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, it is Wait, way what? too what? far what? away. Wait, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna end this one if you don't mind. Okay, good. Now you two do things. Um, Dude, you can't... You're gonna need to knock the, the ladder down. You, is that what you think? Is that what... Yeah. I can't, You're gonna have to take the ladder down. I, I can't move. Oh, God! Uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lumberjack, just go up there. S son of a bitch! I'm gonna do this! I'm doing a thing! What happened? What's broken? Okay, I've got it. I've got this! Boop! Put it down! Go up the ladder! Can I- Okay, okay. 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 We're good. Just grab the- grab it. In fact, here. I'll let you do it on your own. You're a big boy now. Daddy's got you. Yep. You- you got it. There You're ready. There we go! Yay! You, are... you can do it! Clip, 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 go back. And... Oh, wait. Oh, Falcor said, fuck you, no. Falcor says- Oh, never mind. He's got it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's my favorite like, thing about oh, the last. Oh, I saw you fuck. I saw you doing fuck with this. <laughs> I know what you did. I know you took control of my body. I can feel it. Well, that was a match that happened, huh? <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's a match that I'm equally as glad is over now. Throw that in the garbage, lumberjack. Show, prove your loyalty. Prove fealty to me. Ah, oh, shit. Extreme rules, baby. Extreme rules. All right. Yanni. <laughs> hey. Hey. All right. Now, let's be honest. Zack Ryder is currently in a, what I consider a must-win situation. Because Zack Ryder, like we saw last week, Papa Bliss was defeated by Johnny Banana. This week, Zack Ryder has, well, okay. I was like, did he just do it that easy? Did he just um, do it? But yeah, Zack Ryder is in a do or die situation. Like, you don't want to be. Like, because Zack has already suffered the greatest shame. 
which is to be inserted into the Highway to Hell tournament. Which, if you win the Highway to Hell tournament and then don't win your eventual match, like, that is an ultimate embarrassment. All people know is that you are the best of the worst. Yeah. And that is all you can ever be, especially if you can't um, rise up above that. The Being the winner of the Highway to Hell tournament, it is not a victory in itself. It is an albatross around your neck until you prove yourself. Exactly. And we've seen my wife, Emily Ireland, proved herself. Hollywood Hulcher, he may not have won his match, but I'll be damned if he did not prove himself. A, in the tournament, and B, overall. Zach, uh, Zach did not have anything great like... Hollywood Hulcher overcoming the BMJ or winning the women's title. Zach just happened to win and then didn't prove himself. So, like, this is this is his real proving grounds right now against Mr. Cash in the bag, bananas in pajamas. In his pajamas. He ain't doing too well. And the, them JWF boys have been dominant, and I will admit that. But of course, we know that this is our B squad. This is the B squadron. Our A squadrons are champions. They're gonna be the people facing off at the pay-per-view. They're gonna be the, the fuck just happened there? They're gonna be uh, the blockbusters, the Gazis, the, the, all of them. That's where our dominance are going to be showing. But right now, Zack Ryder is being fed a turnbuckle by Johnny Bananas. Oh. Whips him into the turnbuckle as Zack Ryder. Big forearm shot, though. What could we possibly see? Oh, no, instead. Holy shit, shot out of that corner is, in fact, Johnny Bananas trying to continue the win streak of Joey Pajamas, his uh, known associate a few minutes ago. Oh, big neck breaker, though. Takes him down. Yeah, uh, I think we're seeing the real strengths and weaknesses of uh, Bananas and Pajamas here. Namely, that uh, Joey Pajamas is real fucking good, and Johnny is kind of struggling to keep up. That's right. Quit trying to break up Bananas and Pajamas. What the fuck? Super kick there. Goes for the pinfall off of it. One, two. Ooh, barely kicking out his rider, but you, you can see Johnny already has rider weakened. Rider's going to need a big comeback. He's going to need something big to happen if he manages to get this victory. Yep, and uh, I'm going to be honest. This is, the, uh, this is the place that you end up as the Highway to Hell tournament winner. The uh, constant underdog until essentially your situation changes. Exactly. And we know for certain people like Hollywood Ultra that did change. Oh, wait a minute. Ryder. Ryder getting whipped into the corner. Oh, but wait a minute. Reverses. Big. Wise move. Drops to his back. Uses that ability to kick him off. Oh, was going for a Hurricane Rana, but gets dropped on his face for his troubles. And Zach is going to bat right now, wailing on that lower back. And now Zach looking for his own plunder underneath the ring. And it looks like he's got it. Steel chair time. And I don't know if you noticed that. He actually hit Johnny with the steel chair when he got into the ring. And uh, okay. Now yeah. it just kind of yeets it. And he just tossed it out. He only needed that one hit. That's right, because he may be getting set up for that big boot. But Johnny fighting back once again. Johnny showing such resiliency. But Ryder reverses that big splash. Ooh, radio silence falls into the pinfall. One, two. Ooh, kicking out is Johnny Bananas. There's been some solid finisher kickouts tonight. Yeah, we, I mean, we've had a lot of uh, good reversals, good kickouts, killer, killer, really, like, it feels like some people are putting their all into this more than others right now. That's right, uh, including on commentary. All right, Zack Ryder goes to the outside, Johnny Bananas lying in wait, you can st see that steel chair waiting on the ground, perhaps one of them could take advantage of it. No, what? Oh, That's ridiculous. I thought he was about to slam him down onto it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Peeling the banana onto the concrete. And I don't know if he caught all of it, but I think a part of his forehead may have hit that steel chair because Ryder is currently bleeding. Ooh, yeah. It's, I mean, he, he smacked him right down onto his head, the front of his face. That which is literally only front, I guess, when you think about the face. That's right, but Ryder 
Ryder has him in position. Could we see something innovative? Could we see something new? And it looks like we are. Oh my God, just stomping on the gut. Ryder showing a new vicious side at this point because he knows that he's in, the, we've said it enough, do or die right now for him. Yeah, however, Joey was a joke. It is so late. Oh, it is boy, so Johnny, fucking late. Um, yeah, Johnny was uh, able to sweep the leg and just take out Ryder's momentum yet again. Well, that one person in the crowd was screaming, sweep the leg, Johnny. <laughs> and it worked. And you know what? Johnny listened. And when Johnny listens, it ain't good. Uh-huh, but wait. Picked back up. Super kick straight into that bloodied skull. But... You can see Johnny looking a little exhausted, a little exacerbated. Goes for the pinfall. One, two, kick out from Ryder. And at this point, Johnny Banana's thinking, what can I do? I've hit peel into banana. I've hit the super kicks. I've done just about everything I can. Yeah, uh, he, he is running out, honestly. Uh, he's running out of steam, running out of ideas at this point. Uh-huh, but maybe, maybe going back to that well is a good idea as he was going for it. He was trying to set up for peeling the banana. Ryder gets out of the way, drop kicks him into the corner. He fell face first onto one of those turnbuckles and he is primed, ready, but reverses. Big step up kick. Very good. It's almost like he suckered Ryder in with that. That's right. Now Ryder in place on the outside, both of these individuals. Oh wait, what is this? Oh! Ryder, holy shit, getting wrapped up like a pretzel by Johnny Bananas, who's now just trying to weaken the net back, and he's got Ryder tapping, but unfortunately, he's on the outside. Yes, this is not a false count anywhere mat style match. It is extreme rules, though, um, but you've still got to get your win in the ring. Zach is ready. Zach's poised. Oh, radio silence into a ring apron, and then, oh, was going to try to throw him back into the ring but instead Johnny stops him oh hits that beautiful rolling kick and I think it might be all over but the hurting here for the man known as Zack Ryder who gets suplexed down and now just look at the crimson mask decorating the face of Zack Ryder yeah his face his chest that blood is just smeared all down him that's right and Zack oh sends him flying into what many inf have informed me is the hardest part of the apron. Oh, is that the hardest part? Uh huh, but wait a minute. Oh, Ryder in position. Blood covering that body. Elbow drop from Johnny Bananas. Falls into a pinfall. One, two. Ooh, barely kicking out, though, is Zack Ryder. And, and you can see him wiping the blood away from his eyes. Oh, man, that, that was truly a barely kick out right there. Uh -huh, but wait, big kick to the face, big kick to the face, big kick to the gut. And whips him down, grabs him, and just look at this. Look at the gruesome sight of Zack Ryder's skull right now. He got him in. Oh, wait, what is this? What is this? Massive suplex into a neck breaker. And let me tell you something, that was a wise move. Johnny flipped over. Johnny did not think that that was going to get maneuvered over. Instead, Zach managed to hold on to the neck, transfer it from a suplex into a neck breaker. Wise, quick thinking there from Zach Ryder, but unfortunately, it is not getting him the victory as Johnny Bananas is already coming back. Yeah, and he, he is just completely destroying Zack Ryder at this point. That's right, but wait a minute. Zack managing to come back with a suplex. And I think one more radio silence. Oh, no, instead, Zack going to the top rope. Could we see the elbow drop? But no, getting out of the way is Johnny Bananas once again. Mm, it's like uh, Ryder just can't connect on these big moves with uh, the he's slippery like a banana god just elbow or, or that big knee to the skull once again and then flatlining him again for his troubles and unfortunately Zack Ryder he has been through a lot in this match but I do not think he will be able to withstand a third peeling the banana straight down onto the mat going for the pinfall and he gets in position one two three
That was brutal, man. The Bananas and Pajamas did not come down to JXT to play. They came down to prove themselves. They came down to show dominance. And they did over the past multiple weeks. Taking out Papa Blitz. Taking out Zack. Um, this is a completely new Bananas and Pajamas that we're seeing. Although, a completely separate. Jesus! Oh, fuck, Zack. <laughs> I know, right? How are they number Very one sad. contenders? Uh-oh. That's not good. That is not good. It's okay. We're kicking them out after crossing the line. But now a tag team match that I can get behind. Four of the best in the women's division taking place today in this exclusive red versus blue match. All right. Oh, I forgot I made it easier on us. And now look at this. The, the Val going after skill up Phoenix and Emily not wanting to wait until their title match which of course thanks to the great negotiation powers of yours truly is going to be the first ever women's match on a JWF pay-per-view of course it's going to be Phoenix versus Emily at crossing the line uh, but uh, it looks like Phoenix is really putting the champ to task right now oh yeah uh, but although Emily looks like she's come back and, and she is, uh, she's trying to just like squeeze the life out of Phoenix Driver. Yeah, Blue Team is actually showing some big resilience, but you gotta remember there is still Phoenix Driver, one of the most dominant. Look at this, look at this this arm clothesline maneuver, not letting go of the arm, keeping hold of it the entire time as Skilla takes Val to the outside, and that's that's a wise move keep Emily down on the inside and keep Val distracted and it can allow for a big victory here for Team Red. That is true. Uh, if you've got your heavy hitter if um, and their opponent is weak, the person they're facing at that moment, then if you're a team, the teammate, you, you do your best to run interference. Keep their teammate from interfering in anything that you're doing, especially if it means breaking up a pen. Oh, look at that beautiful jumping leg drop from Skilla on the outside, who has just got a fucking sledgehammer and is trying to go to work on the Daughter of the Sea, but Val Curry not having. No, no, she is not. Um, she is... Uh, it's almost like seeing that sledgehammer come out ha has enraged Val Curry. That's right. And meanwhile, Skilla. Oh, crucifix pin. Oh, but doesn't hold on. Meanwhile, the outside. Look at this. Emily just working over the neck of Phoenix Driver once again as Val escapes another shot from that sledgehammer. Yeah, man. Whips her down is Skilla. Both of these women having shown dominance in the past here in the JXT Women's Division. I think, honestly, champion and number one contender, they have forgotten that this is a match. They are just brawling on the outside. Yeah, these two just want to fight. Um, they they aren't wanting to save it, like you said, because this is, the, this is the time that they get to just be completely violent and brutal with each other. Meanwhile, Skilla taking excessive advantage of the Extreme Rules concept a, a blatant chair shot straight to the skull to Val Curry, but unfortunately Val managed to come back, but instead she gets caught. She is caught dialing up. 6-1-9. Now climbing to the top rope is in fact Skilla. Skilla is there. Oh, but misses the West Coast pop. Meanwhile on the outside, Emily in a very bad way. Right, Manka! Oh. But on the inside, Team Blue just hit a Momoan punch. Val Curry with a Momoan punch, a tribute to her father. But unfortunately, Skilla has managed to come back very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's almost like that that punch had uh, very little effect on Skilla. Oh, on outside, Maybe she didn't outside, get all of it. On the outside, Blue Bomber straight to the concrete. Oh, and unfortunately, Val Curry finds herself between a rock and a hard place. Oh, and once again gets the knees up on that frog splash. And now if I was Val Curry, I, I know my daddy's moveset. I know how to bring it home. It's just a matter of if she can nail it. Yeah, she's if she hits that spear, it, it should be uh, all over. That's right. Goes for a pinfall, though. One. Ooh, kick out. And you can see Phoenix Driver wisely still paying attention to the match. 
Emily, it took her a while to realize what was going on. Oh, Skilla. Skilla avoided the Momoan punch as Emily with a big running knee. Look at the series of strikes. 6-1-9. Oh, Skilla on the top rope. Phoenix being forced to roll to the outside. Oh, Val. Val gets the knees up. Val gets the knees up. Emily has Skilla prone. Big clothesline. Second. Emily looking fresh, looking ready. Oh, beautiful drop kick. And now Skilla is in a very bad way. Phoenix Driver is on the outside. Boom, took Val out, but unfortunately Emily clips the legs. Yes, and it looks like we've had a, a oh, switch in positions here. Was going for the blue bomber, rolls her up. One, boom, kick out from Skilla, or I'm sorry, from Emily. And let's remember, Emily's also got a vendetta against Skilla right now. As she, oh, Skilla just Hurricane Rana's her down onto that steel chair. Meanwhile, on the outside, Val Curry is about to eat a rainmaker of her own. All right, Emily, the champion looking prone. You gotta think Emily's gonna want that victory back from last week that Skilla managed to get over. Oh, Spear! Spear on the outside to Phoenix Driver as Emily, Emily pins Skilla! Pins. Wow, very nice combination right there. Very good. Um, Val Curry made sure that Phoenix Driver was down, unable to interfere, and that led uh, Emily, uh, once she got the opportunity, to get the win. Yep, get that pinfall, get that win back over Skilla, and Tim Team Blue gets the victory tonight, but can it get the victory at crossing the line when Emily Ireland finally goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Phoenix Driver? I like this alliance. I kind of like this alliance a lot. It is very fun, yeah. Oh, but now it's on to our main event. And this is a match we've seen before, and it's never disappointed. As the Jebaduck takes on the man who he will be facing at crossing the line in a tag team match, Fomosan. And I, look, Fomosan has beaten Jeb numerous times in the past, but he's never fought this Jebaduck. He's never fought the Triple Crown winner, Jebaduk. All right, Jebaduk, FOMO-san, a rivalry almost as old as JXT itself. You got to remember, the Jeb's quest to become a Triple Crown champion, it started with this man. It started with winning the BS title from this man. And as you can see, there's, it, they have not missed a step. They are bringing the fury to one another as if it was just yesterday they were fighting for that championship. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, it, they picked up right where they left off. That's right. And now, wait a minute, though. Jeb, beautiful suplex, dumping FOMO down onto his skull before just dragging him to the center of the ring. And now Jebaduk, oh, stomping on the gut. Damn, Jeb. Jeb is already at signature. Oh, this, this does not spell good things for the Hammer Man and FOMO-san come crossing the line. This does not spell good things. He is already trying to just suck the soul out of FOMO-san, but FOMO! Finally, the first person to ever escape out of it with the big knees to the back. All right, FOMO getting worked over by Jeb still, though. Things are not looking good for the man known as the Rising Sun, a former BS champion, a current JWF tag team champion. He's finally coming back, but will he have enough to take out the Jebaduck? Oh, beautiful, beautiful suplex. Oh, and he is feeling it. He is feeling it. He's got him up. Big clothesline, followed by a second. FOMO-san feeling it. Beautiful mule kick straight to the face. And let me tell you, that's not easy to reach the face of the Jebaduck. Spin no, kick. No, you, you gotta lift high. Oh, he hit the uh, that big, big spin kick. And now he goes to the top rope. Usually at that point, we'd see the Rising Sun suplex. Instead, massive senton straight to the gut. Falls into the pinfall. One, two, kick out. I will say, Jeb's hat was in the ropes. That should have counted. Yeah, um, the hat is uh, 
It's not actually a hat. It is as much a part of his body as anything else. Yes, it's horrifying. Oh, just stomping on the arm is FOMO-san. And FOMO looking poised and ready. He may have him set up for the Rising Sun suplex, but instead gets back body drop for his trouble by Gemini. Shotgun splash! Splash. Oh, boy. Got him back up. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Sets him up once again. Yurinagi goes for the pinfall off of it. One. Two. Oh, just barely did FOMO-san get out of that. Very close. If FOMO-san, uh, he, he was able to get some good offense in, but now he is once again on the ropes. Got a good uh, a good reversal, kicked Jeb down, and now it looks like he's got some control again. Uh huh. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Instead, Jeb oh was going for a suplex. Oh, look at that! The strength of Fomo San, talk just tossing him, and then oh those long limbs of Jeb managed to get to the ropes before Fomo can do anything big. But it looks like he might be trying to close things off right now. Oh, I thought he might have been going for the hammer leg drop, a uh, tribute to his tag team partner, the Hammer Man. Instead, oh my god i don't know who got the worst of that one yeah that was a painful crossbody right there but he had to really really jump far that's right oh second spin kick a second spin kick to fo or to jebedek from fomo -san, who picks him up could we see it could we see it oh no instead oh was going for a suplex jeb stops him clotheslines him into the corner oh and jebedek's feeling it Jebeduk feeling it, slams him down to the mat. Big kick. Goes for the pinfall off of that massive kick to the chest. Two, and uh, oh, barely once again, Fomosan. He is resilient, but this is a new and improved Jebeduk, unlike anything Fomo saw before he left for JWF. Very true, but Fomo still knows some ways to how he beat the old Jebeduk. And it, it, it looks like uh, Jeb is Wait, still susceptible to some, but... That's a Trinity Bomb. One, two, kicks out of the Trinity Bomb, but how does Jeb know that? I'm not entirely sure, but this is a, obviously some dark incarnation of the Trinity Bomb. A dark machination of the Trinity Bomb goes for the pinfall off of it. One, two, three. There is something not just in Falcor, there's something dark inside the Jebeduk as well. We suspected that it was his, the influence of his father, but it, it may be something different. What, which, what have you been feeding to these boys down here to make them this evil? I don't know, but Jeb with a murderous maneuver, a dark version of the Trinity Bomb, and... I just don't know what's going on here in the JWF. It, it looks even Fomosan's acting like something's off. Very interesting. Well, I, who knows what's going to happen next with all these boys. I, I guess we'll find out next time on JXT Pro Wrestling.